The girl had never met up with, nor had she ever thought she would meet up with, a half-human, half-man, a centaur, standing bold and stately next to a tall fir. As if he'd predicted their approach, he lifted a hoof with a white moonstone gem in it and boomed, approach marriage from an inspired mindset. Whatever does that mean? asked the girl as she grabbed the stone. But without another word, the centaur was gone as quickly as he'd appeared. They added the white moonstone to the crown, which became... Gem number four. Approach marriage from an inspired mindset. Do you remember back when we started hearing about the growth versus the fixed mindset? The growth concept is encouraged on the opening webpage of our local school district. Here's a brief rundown of the two. Growth mindset is freedom. Persevere in the face of failures. Effort is required to build new skills. Find inspiration in others' success. Embrace challenges. Accept criticism. Desire to learn. Build abilities. And the fixed mindset is limiting. Avoid challenges. Give up easily. Threatened by others' success. Desire to look smart. Effort is fruitless. Ignore feedback. Fixed abilities. So I had to read the book by Carol Dweck called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. I left the book a little unsettled. As one who has suffered from anxiety issues all my life, I couldn't help but feel the pull of anxiety that you just can't be enough in the fixed mindset. So let's push you into the discomfort zone of the growth mindset. Would you agree that anxiety disorders have skyrocketed over the years since the growth mindset was presented? After reading this book, I pondered upon it for a few years, then finally came to a conclusion. You may have a growth or a fixed mindset. Put hastily, you have someone who can boldly think outside the box the growth mindset, or someone who will miserably maintain their strict standards into the indefinite future, the fixed mindset. The problem with the two is that the fixed mindset creates complacency, and the growth mindset can orchestrate anxiety. But what happens when you marry the two, growth plus fixed? You know what works for you from advisable past experience, and then you push yourself a little, but not to a point of anxiety which creates change. So what can bridge that gap from the growth to the fixed? Well, it's the inspired. The inspired mindset facilitates your tapping into your own internal, unadulterated truth for you, reaching to the divine to encompass real truth and knowledge. You find points of direction when melding the inspired with the growth, and acceptance combining the fixed and the inspired which encapsulates a beautiful chemistry of movement, surrender, and revelation. Which means in marriage, you have the benefits of all three. If you can't figure out marriage in a fixed or growth mindset, as in, can't live with them, can't live without them, then add a holy peace that speaks truth for your union, working from an inspired mindset that pushes through chaos not working in marriage. The inspired mindset in marriage means that you have everything you need for a good marriage because God provides it. This is faith. That sometimes it is little incremental things, line upon line and precept upon precept, that make all the difference in a good marital union. See Isaiah 28 verse 10. That when things seem to be going terribly wrong, that there is an equally wonderful right. Where is the silver lining in the otherwise dark cloud? That you do things even when they don't make sense when feeling spiritually suggested to do that thing. That if you are struggling in marriage, there's probably some meaning to the experience that you need to work on for yourself. Control issues become surrendered for what really is in your stewardship, which is likely much less than you think in some ways and much more in other ways. You understand pride and stubbornness for what they are and learn to be open in a healthy relationship of being known and knowable. That you put your spouse in God's hands. Heavenly parents know all the answers. They prescribed the union and wrote the instruction manual on how to make it a viable blessing. 
They know the directions perfectly, customized to you too. It's like going to the source of the headwaters. The source of the water as God is clear as you let him carry you through to his wellspring of truth and happiness. And if you don't have God in your life and in your marriage, why not? Why miss out on that wonderful trilogy of truth and support in a marriage? In your marriage mindset making things work, remember that God is never in a hurry and is never a moment too late. That things may not be according to your timeline, but they are definitely in God's timeline for you. Your growth, inspired direction, acceptance, inspired surrender, is perfect for right now. Now for a date idea. My husband once invited me into our bedroom where an actual four-man dome tent was set up. Inside, a laptop displayed a video of a roaring fire, and he'd positioned our lizard chairs that sit on the ground like stadium chairs around a Scrabble board. Now, you can do any word game you want, but we had a lot of fun with this makeshift Scrabble in, in the great outdoors. You don't have to set up a tent for your next date, but how about a good word game challenge around a roaring fire? Want a dessert that pushes you into a different mindset? Try punch bowl cake. Make up a cake mix according to directions on the box. Prepare your instant pudding of choice. A large box is good, and be ready to use it before it sets up. And have a container of whipped topping ready. In a pretty clear bowl, like a fruit bowl or trifle bowl, grab handfuls of the prepared cake and throw it into the bowl. Drizzle with the unset prepared pudding, then gob on the whipped topping, layering each of these repeatedly, randomly. Cake, pudding, and whipped topping until they are gone. Add cherries on top, or any other topping that suits your fancy. This is a quick, pretty dessert that truly satisfies.